What is Kundalini? According to Hinduism, Kundalini is a form of primal energy or Shakti that resides at the base of the spine. In many modern and historical sources, the Kundalini energy is pictured as a coiled serpent. And as this dormant energy rises upwards through the spine and through the seven chakras, it leads to an expanded state of consciousness. Ascension itself is a change in frequency that is actually a byproduct of biological Kundalini awakening. Through the process of ascension, we are essentially moving our consciousness from one reality to another or shifting dimensions. So, for example, a person that is going through ascension can actually experience a consciousness shift from, let's say, the third dimension to the fourth dimension, and so on and so forth. Thereby, dimensions are not only physical places, you know, other planets with high vibrational beings and energy. They are also part of our reality. And the beautiful thing is that we can shift from one reality to another, thereby gaining access to higher knowledge and higher states of being. Now, as the Kundalini energy moves upwards through the spine, it is said to resemble the movements of a snake. And we can see this visual representation in the medical symbol known as the caduceus, which has its origins in Greek mythology, where it was known as the Staff of Hermes. If you look at the caduceus, you will immediately notice there are two snakes. The staff itself represents the spinal column. The snakes are the kundalini energy, which are represented as masculine and feminine energies. Hence, the two snakes flowing upwards and the two wings at the top are associated with flight or ascending upwards. So, the kundalini energy moves from the base of the spine to the top. Thus, the rising serpent in rising kundalini is essentially the awakening of the individual and the connection back to source. Now, this actually ties into the Bible because if you've read it to some extent, then you will probably recognize this image. This is Moses lifting up the serpent in the wilderness. And in my opinion, this is a symbolic image that depicts the Kundalini energy. What's interesting is that metaphysically speaking, the serpent represents consciousness, primal energy, and that's why it's so prevalent throughout history from Greek mythology to the Bible to ancient Egypt and even the Mayans. The snake is everywhere, yet we've been taught to view it as a negative symbol. And here's why. Because if you create fear around a particular image, symbol or animal, in this case the snake, most people will literally shy away from it out of fear because this fear creates repulsion. So in my opinion, fear can be used as a tool to conceal knowledge. And isn't it funny how we also see the snake in the Garden of Eden as the great evil, the devil, instead of looking at the real symbolism behind the snake which has nothing to do with the devil and everything to do with consciousness and this inner energy that connects us to our higher truth. It's all been done to suppress knowledge. Yet that knowledge has always been there in plain sight. But since we've been living in such a lower state of consciousness, we don't question anything we limit ourselves instead of expanding. And that's why fear is also used as a means to keep us in that lower vibration, that lower state of consciousness. Hell, my friends, is the lower consciousness, the lower self, the false self, 
the false ego. Heaven is higher consciousness, the higher self, the true self, the true ego. You know, my history teacher used to tell us that many of the ancient civilizations didn't actually have any contact with one another. Yet, I would always reply back and say, if that's true, then why is it that there are pyramids in almost every continent? And my professor would just stay quiet because he didn't know what to say. Now, to me it's clearly evident that a lot of these ancient civilizations were far more advanced than we are. Yet, we've been led to believe that they were savages with bows and arrows. And that's a historical lie. So, who are the real savages? Are we not savages? We kill and rob people for their phones. We kill animals just to hang them on our wall as trophies. We go to war with each other and commit acts of genocide because it's a profitable business for certain individuals. We pollute the very earth that provides us with life. And we let children starve just for the simple fact that we've become too greedy. We worship money more than we worship life. And yes, my friends, all life is sacred. So in essence, we've created our own hell, this lower consciousness we've been living in. This is where the ancients actually differ from us, because they were more spiritually awake than we are. They had a profound awareness of the Kundalini energy, the subtle body and soul evolution. Now, whether you want to believe this or not is entirely up to you, but the evidence is resoundingly clear. In fact, the Mayans had a different name for Kundalini. They called it the sacred Koyopa energy, which refers to the inner energy or serpent power. That's why there is a snake carved into the pyramid of Kukulkan, because the snake was not a god that they worshipped, but a symbol of that inner energy that is Kundalini. The Koyopa is said to collect in the 13 major articulations or joints of the human body, which can be seen as a Mayan analogy of the chakras. Consequently, in ancient Egyptian texts, Kundalini is referred to as Uraeus, and what that essentially is, is the activation of super consciousness, which is why again the snake is such a powerful symbol especially in Egypt. The development and implementation of the Uraeus, which is actually the snake that comes out of the forehead of the pharaohs, is essentially a visual representation of the Kundalini, or the serpent energy. You know, it's funny because some people actually think that these snakes were reptilian-like beings that came to earth. And that's another misconception, when in fact, the snake is a symbol that represents the life force or primal energy, which again is Kundalini. Kundalini itself is perhaps something that Western medicine will never understand. And that's because Kundalini energy is not visible in the physical body. It's actually associated with the subtle body as are the chakras and nadis. It is energy that cannot be seen by the naked eye, but it exists nonetheless. In fact, even though it's not visible, we can feel it just as we can feel the breeze on a windy day. And it's usually felt in the form of goosebumps in the skin, shaking, sudden jerks, or electricity in the body. Interestingly enough, Kayopa in common speech means sheet lightning or body lightning, which is the sensation that most people experience during a rise in Kundalini energy. And I've had this happen to me several times now. And for the most part, it feels like very subtle jolts of electricity that can all of a sudden cause certain parts of your body to jerk in weird ways. Now, a word of caution, 
Kundalini energy cannot rise if your Nadi system is not cleansed. If there are any blockages, the energy will not flow freely. And attempting to make this energy rise when there is congestion is downright dangerous. You really have to know what you're doing. Otherwise, you will experience negative side effects. Hence, that's why many people also experience adverse side effects when activating their chakras, especially their third eye. If you're a negative person and have blockages in the lower chakras and attempt to open your sixth chakra without cleansing the previous ones, guess what? You will probably have a negative experience. Remember that if your inner world is full of junk, you will attract more of the same. People need to be aware that the subtle body basically revolves around energy. And clearing out these blocks is essential if you want to work with chakras, nadis, and kundalini energy. By the way, nadis are simply channels through which the life force energy known as prana flows. And so prana needs to flow freely through the system in order for it to be healthy. It's believed that there are as many as 72,000 nadis or energy pathways in the body. Thus, kundalini is essentially that life force energy, which is also the core of our personal power. It can inspire us to write a book, write a song, or have epiphanies, because this energy is what connects us back to source. And source is higher consciousness, creativity, expansion, truth, and love. The knowledge of this hidden energy has been suppressed for thousands of years because it has the capacity to awaken our true self, thereby making us masters of our reality, not slaves to it. So let me conclude this video by saying, that the kundalini is an important aspect of the body. It is the sleeping serpent that many ancient civilizations talked about or depicted in their pyramids or hieroglyphics. And most importantly, when this energy reaches the brain, it has a profound impact on the pineal gland, which is essentially a conduit for spiritual experiences, especially during meditation. And I've talked about this in other videos, especially those meditative states that are mentioned throughout many Bible stories, such as those of Jacob. So live fully, stay healthy, humble yourself, and surrender to this divine life force, because when it awakens, your consciousness will shift, and you will realize that you've been sleeping all this time. And now, you've been able to pierce the veil of reality. So if you're listening to this, if you've been working to better yourself and you resonate with this message, then I congratulate you for you are awake and the Kundalini energy is more than likely already rising up from within you. Till next time, my friends, much love and peace.